Hey everyone, welcome back and in this episode I'm gonna show you how to do a little bit of maths and a little bit of advanced stuff in Axure. Specifically we're gonna recreate a shopping cart scenario where a user is able to increase the size or let's say an amount of different products within shopping cart. As you can see we have kind of like a screen, let's imagine that this is like a checkout window in a cart and user has just one item. Now we have an indicator there is one item meaning if we increase the amount of items and remove it the indicator has to show something else as well as we have a sum amount of let's say money how much it costs so we can tweak that too and if it's let's say two items we need to double the amount plus calculate the VAT plus 20 percent so we're gonna do a little bit of maps here and there but gonna make it like a semi-functional almost shopping cart if let's say if we increase the amount what happens then so we're gonna cover all those different tiny scenarios. So let's go ahead and jump right into it with one caveat. If you're new to variables, jump a few videos back where I explain exactly what variables are and how to use them. If you are not new and you followed most of the videos I already made, let's do it. Let's go and recreate this design in Axure. Boom, our preview looks pretty good. As you can see, since I selected Artboard for mobile, for Android tablet, it gives us mobile options, which is okay. Now, the only trigger what we want to make happen is for users to be able either reduce the size of objects or of, let's say, uh, products in cart or increase it and everything else would follow. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit every single item which would be impacted by that choice. And by that I mean, let's say the shopping cart. So if I add something, we need to increase or decrease it, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and just give it a name. So let's say plus plus, just an indicator that we're gonna change it. Probably you know that already from previous videos. I'm gonna name it something like uh, shopping cart uh, number or something along those lines. Then I'm gonna also rename this one because it's also gonna change potentially, let's say to zero or remove altogether, you know, something along those lines. I'm gonna change it to, let's say, indicator switch number or something like that. Something I would remember in a long term because there might be a lot of different options to tweak. Then I'm gonna change the subtotal and I'm gonna change the name of, let's say, to, because all of it is text fields right now, so we can just rename it. I'm gonna to sum number, and the last one is the total sum, let's say, total sum VAT number. So I have one, two, three, four different fields which might change. Another thing what could change is if I remove everything, this should actually disappear. So I might do something actually funky. I'm gonna just take all of them, create dynamic panel, and I'm gonna give it a name, let's say product. And I'm gonna go inside it and just create, let's say this is one product. And the other state is gonna be no product, let's say. And in one product we can increase the amount or anything but the no product would basically say something like like so again let's leave a styling for a last bit you can always edit the styling yourself if you feel like it and everything is now defined now if you want to go even crazier and define the voucher code what the button does go ahead and do so but i, I just want to kind of cover those cases first and then see what we get so next is defining the variables. Just think about what sort of variables you would need to define in this case. I can think of a few and it's usually, I would probably say one is an amount of products in the card. Two is probably product value. So let's say 169.80 euros per this stand. And three could be, let's say 
maybe VAT percentage, like 20% or something like that. So if we get if we get all those different variables coined, we can actually use them in math and calculate for going forward. And it's going to be quite easy. So I would go ahead and under project, you would have global variables. And I would s create a few variables right away. So one would be, let's say number of products. And default value is one, let's say, then I would select probably something like price per product. And that is one 69.80. And one more, which we said is going to be the VAT number. And that's going to be like 20%. So I'm going to probably have it something like 1.2. So let's say if we need to calculate on top of a sum of a subtotal, we can just multiply by 1.2 and we are going to get the subtotal plus VAT 20%. So that probably makes sense to you, I hope. And now as we have all those variables, just keep in mind what you have. If you don't remember, it's okay. You can always go back to a variable panel and check exactly what variables you have but I'm just gonna go ahead and start tweaking everything. First and foremost, I'm gonna do the trigger. The trigger is most important bit in any actual thing. So I'm just gonna, let's say, convert these two options into dynamic panels. So taking out of it, so I'm gonna name this, let's say minus, I'm gonna name this, let's say plus. So both of them are gonna do something. And let's say if I press plus, I would want to add to our variable and then increase all the objects. So let's go ahead and do so. So I'm going to add new interaction and on click, I'm going to say set variable value like so. And I'm going to select our number of products because this is what we're changing. And I'm going to go into functions really quick. And I'm going to do this where I'm going to select our variable from before, which is number of products. And then I'm going to add plus one because every time we click, we just add one item at a time and we're adding it to a variable and then increasing it. So we are updating it manually like so. And that is going to increase our variable, but it's not going to show anywhere. So what we would want to do next is to add another action after that and just set text. And now we can just go crazy and update every field we had so this is like, let's say shopping cart number should set, so it should be set to value of variable, uh, number of products. This is great. And then another target, let's say, and that's where naming it comes into play. So we have product minus plus indicator switch number. We need to change as well to value of variable and number of products again. And that's just going to change the number. So let's test it out. Let me just show you really quick. So let's say if I would click on plus, as you can see, it's increasing nine dome tens here and here increasing, nothing else changed though. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just tweak the numbers here. All we need to do now is just add the calculations to the maths. We still have that function on click. What we need to do now is just to attach that we need to calculate the subtotal first and foremost, and we also need to calculate the VAT number on top of subtotal. So I'm gonna add another action. I'm gonna do set text, and I'm gonna select our, if you remember, it's sum number. And our sum number is our target, which is just a text field, if you remember. And I'm gonna set it to text. I could just do it to the value, but I want the function we are basically gonna add the variable of a price per product and we're gonna multiply it and add another variable of number of products. Just like that. So we're multiplying one variable against another. Let's see if that works. So if I increase, boom. As you can see, it multiplied three times, 506. Again, we could add a bit more logic and clean it up a little bit and round the numbers. As you can see, there is a lot of different calculations going on, but I'm going to cover that in a different video. For now, I think it should be fine. So as we increase this, it's all increasing and the sum is calculated. 
Another bit what we definitely need to add is the set text. We can add another target and calculate the VAT of the things. So I would say total sum that number, set it to text, of course, and then in a value field, press the function icon again, delete that value, which is just baked in static, and let's add a global variable, which is, could be something like, um, we can do number of products, let's say, x price per product, and then also multiply that by VAT, which is 1.2. And then we're gonna have our math calculated for us. So let's also preview this. So you can see we're going bit by bit, and that's the best scenario. As you can see, we're gonna change this subtotal, and we're also gonna change VAT plus 20%. Boom, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five, and as you can see, it calculates. Now you might be asking, hey, we lost the euro mark in these numbers, can we add it? Of course we can. Um, what you would do is just go back into that trigger and edit these statements and just select that function item. If you see on top, we can add something like euro sign. I don't know where euro sign is even on this keyboard. Oh, found it like this and like so. So we embed it with speech marks around it. Again, all this syntax is explained in edit text panel. So just check it out, read it, try to experiment with it as usual. And do the same with a second statement. Just adding another euro in front of it. And of course with speech marks, with quotations, like so. And let's test it out. Boom, the Euro mark is there. The only thing what I would do, I probably would increase the size of a text field because if let's say there's plenty of zeros, it just goes crazy. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this, just like so, just in case. And preview again, and let's see if that works. Boom, boom. Boom. Again, in this video, I'm not going to show you how to round the numbers. It's quite easy. You can either Google or wait for another video where I'm going to dive deeper into maths. But as you can see, it calculates pretty well. We have subtotal, we have 20% addition, and as many as tens we want to buy, we can just do that. That's great. Now, we are almost there, but the only thing what I also want to add to this is removal of items. Because as you can see, if I want to remove nothing really happens. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna say this one. So minus trigger has nothing yet. So I'm, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna say something like this. New interaction on click and I'm gonna do the set variable. Again, exactly the same way what we did before, but I'm gonna just do the opposite. So I'm going to select the number of products and just going to do minus one, meaning every time we're going to decrease by minus one. With a condition, if it's, let's say, more than zero, we allow it to run. If it's, let's say, less than zero, it would just have to be empty state, right? So what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to add condition to on click statement right after that. I'm going to do add logic and say value of variable number of products and I'm going to select does not equal value let's say zero like so and next what we need to do is to also set that it would update the text because otherwise we can't really see that what's happening so I'm going to go ahead and just do set text again plus plus let's say shopping cart number of course we need to set it to value of variable and that is number of products and do the same if another one, which is basically how many products we have, we indicator switch. And again, setting it to value of variable number of products like so. Let's test it out. Let's see if that works. Boom, as you can see it's zero and then it doesn't allow me to take off. But if I increase, it calculates pretty well and then I can go back to zero. 
that, that works pretty well, right? It just detects that there is nothing and then doesn't allow to take out. The last bit what I wanted to do is actually what happens if it is zero. What I'm actually gonna do, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna create another statement with an if and just say, let's say case two, if value of variable number of product is one off and just select zero, that means on click, if it is zero is I'm gonna add an action and I'm gonna set the panel state of this. If you remember, we created a, like a removed state where nothing is there in a shopping cart. This is exactly where we are gonna use it. So I'm gonna find it here and I'm gonna select no product like so. And let's test it out really quick. Boom, we can add three, let's say, we can take it out. Again, you can add calculations once you're taking out this exactly the same way. I'm gonna leave it to you how to do so. But let's say if it's zero, as you can see, everything is removed. And you can browse for more because nothing is shown. Pretty cool, isn't it? That basically sums up our shopping cart instance for this. It's quite basic. I want to go a bit deeper in next videos, but you can see exactly how you can use maths to calculate things, how you can increase value and affect different things using variables as well. So you can do a shitload of that. It's actually is a muscle tool and we should use it to a full extent as it's supposed to. So if you find this video useful, give it a like, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment down below, really appreciate. I received so many, much good feedback that you know it keeps on giving back so I'm really really appreciate it. As per usual, stay tuned for more material and I'll see you next time.